Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number 17 of The Blood Letters, a live Blades in the Dark campaign, which we have been playing for a thousand years. If you want a quick recap, this game is about a badass lady, a little wizard, and their idiot friend who never does anything right. <laughs> Thanks for coming, team. How's everybody doing? I miss you guys. We never get to we never get to hang out because we're all so damn busy. I know. It's ridiculous. Kind yeah, of. This, this, is our, this is our chance to hang out. But yeah, I know. It's good. It's good. How's how's your how's your thing how's your thing going? How's actual play going? Tell me about this because I'm I'm hyped, but I obviously don't have time to like pay any more attention. So I'm gonna just ask you, and you can tell me about it now. Yeah, we'll just tell you that it's awesome, and then you just have to absorb all it's of it. Good. That. I believe you. I believe you when you tell me that it's awesome. That's all uh, I need to know. Yes, uh, yeah. we've been we've been Josh has been running Scum and Villainy for us, and uh, Jory Bowers and Andy Carrison are are playing, and I'm I'm the third player, and it's. Uh, it's been phenomenal. We've only had three sessions, but it's been so good. Uh, nice. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk, talk more about it, Shosh, but... Yeah, Shosh, yeah. how's your thing? It's like a space thing, right? Yeah, actually. Um, well, it's based on Place in the Dark, so if you like that, you'll probably like Scum and Villainy. It's a, it's a space opera-ish game. It's got a lot of different kind of ideas wrapped up in it. It's a little bit of a pastiche. Uh, we're playing kind of a uh, somewhere between... Guardians of the Galaxy and Firefly, I think, is our tone. Nice. Um, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's got like weird aliens, space mystics, all that good stuff. Sweet. Yeah, Ooh. I like it. I've 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 not played it, but I've looked at uh, at all of that stuff, and it looks dope as shit. I saw. <laughs> speaking of looking at things on the internet, John, John, yeah. your game, your game in physical form is so beautiful. I want mine so bad. Somebody posted a picture of the special edition and i was just like i hate that these people have this thing and i don't have it yet it's so beautiful look at these a-holes i don't have it yet either look at this son of a bitch give me my game give me my game i'm coming to your house sean i'm i know where you live <laughs> seriously it is really it is really nice though john uh you, 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 and, you and the team have done some bang up work yes it's, it's it amazing it's out real. Per basically perfectly like it, i mean in terms of my vision for it like uh, it, it's exactly the thing that I imagined it to be, thanks to Team Evil Hat and Karen and everybody who worked on it, um, and Taylor who printed it, who just did a fucking amazing job um, making it look the way I want wanted it to look. It, yeah, it yeah, couldn't yeah. be. It's, it's fantastic. It's it's right, kids. You you too, listening at home. You too can be a game designer. You just got to make really nice character sheets and then make a <laughs> game around them, and then get someone who knows how to make books look nice to make it into a real object. That yeah, that's it. you can Just do it. That. Game design is the easiest thing you'll ever do in your life. This right here is a 360 page character sheet. Yeah, it's it's really sweet. Yeah, I say shit like that because I don't know how to make anything look nice. If you want a game designed and, and published by Adam Coble, uh, you will get a text file. It would be game.txt uh, and uh, normal game designers. They need other people to do all the fancy shit for them. But no, not John Harper. Not well, you just you need a way to express characters with uh, by taking photographs. Mm, mm -hmm. and then, then you can totally do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to make the pho the photographical equivalent of uh of like a ribbon drive, but with pictures. Yeah, exactly. it'll be a, a thirty five gig game. <laughs> all the will be right, right exactly. <laughs> Aren't there video games whose mechanics are like finding ghosts and shit in photos? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Fatal those. Frame. Fatal Frame. Yep. Right. It's your next RPG, Adam. <laughs> yeah, right. Fatal Frame, the RPG. Cool. All you got to do is buy a $2,000 digital camera and you can play my game. It's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah. there, there are more expensive barriers to entry. Uh... Yeah, as long as, as long as the game is less expensive than a first edition copy of Dungeons & Dragons, you're not. It's fine. Or, or I guess Noblest. I think Noblest is like $4,000. I, I remember that. It's a giant coffee table book. Yeah, it's heinous. It's too big. It's a good game, kind of, um, but yeah, yeah enormous. Yeah, I've yeah. I've been really good, and it's been a great last couple of weeks. But I have been like had this burning, this pain inside me. This like, I have all of these bombs. <laughs> like, Dude, I feel you. Up. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Let's let's get right into that shit because woo baby, it is time to blow some shit up and blame it on Scotsman. Uh, <laughs> Because God blind us. Yeah. Free scope. That's right. Free scope. We did a poll. 
And uh, apparently the only thing anyone gives any shits about is Bellwether Crematorium. We can blow up the blue coat, <laughs> we can blow up the crow's nest, we can blow up Skurlock Manor. Nobody cares. But don't blow up the, the crematorium because the spirit ones who were big fat jerk faces uh, live yeah. there. I don't know. Yeah, the way they, they, they just make life possible for the civilized world. What yeah. an asshole. Right. Listen, oh. listen, listen, John, just because you created this world doesn't mean you get to tell us what happens. We're just going <laughs> to blow it up and it'll be fine. Um, yeah. yeah, there's that's the great thing is that, you know, that that old that old saying is just so true that when all you have is a train full of bombs, everything looks like someone you want to blow up. So yeah. we have a it's a target. Duskfall is a target rich environment right now. And I know that I have four points in the skirmish. And it's time to get some shit done. So what do we what do we think? What should we do? Well, I think we should do downtime and then we should I think we should do downtime fast. I would I would be excited about that and then do a score. Um, and I th our two choices that we talked about were give the guns to the grinders and get them to help us fight the crows, or just blow up, you know, an, a target of opportunity, like I don't know, the 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 spirit wardens that are hanging out and crimping our drug business because they're making it hard to sell lure by being present. So I if would we just like I would like to blow up someone who we can blow up completely. Like I don't just want to blow off someone's metaphorical arms here. I want to destroy them in a hellish <laughs> blaze of of fire. You're gonna blow off their metaphorical arms. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I would like to destroy them completely if it's at all possible. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to do some like rifts level mega damage to some. I, I think. I think then. Then the option is we give part of the bombs, part of the guns to the grinders. They they can't use everything we got. We got too much. And then we go to war with the crows because we know that's gonna happen anyway. We can blow, we, we literally just blow the crows? We take the whole tower and we just blow it up. Can we do Didn't that? Did they become war dogs? Yeah, they become war dogs, right? Okay, can, good. Can we do that in reverse order? Can we blow up our enemies and then whatever we have left, we can give to them? Well, the point is, when we go to fight the crows, right now they have the grinders and possibly the lamplocks on their side, and we have maybe the bell hooks. So the reason for doing that is getting the grinders on our side when we go to fight the crows, because it's not just going to be blowing up the crows tower and sending it to the moon. It's going to be fighting in the street. That's what you think. Well, yeah. Uh, the major purpose of that is to blow up the crow's tower, send it to the moon, but leave their vault on the ground? Is that what we really want? If it's yeah. a good vault, it won't blow up. We'll blow up everything around it, and we'll loot through I'm Scott Pilgrim sure. style through the rubble. And we'll I'm pretty sure coins. I saw the scene in the last word where Lissa's vault was literally just the top floor of just shit piled on her floor. It was just <laughs> like, she was like Scrooge McDucking that shit. <laughs> She's like, treasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just mm -hmm. flinging them around yeah there's some there's some crew in duskwall that people are talking about that like lured all their enemies into a building and then burned it down yes yeah of them. So like the cut of their jib get everyone to meet at the crow's tower and, and launch it like a rocket out of the city <laughs> <laughs> yeah don we don't you know what we don't need to kill them they can they can continue their life <laughs> on another planet it's fine <laughs> Your home planet needs you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Return to whatever shitty world you came I must from. Go. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. rocket them out into space. But, it's uh, fine. but, it, but in real time, do you actually want to literally like blow up a building? Because we need to like figure out a building to blow up, or do you just want to use the guns as intimidation against other people? Like we could, we could blow up your building. I mean, guns are like an erection. They're nice to have, but pointless if you don't use them for anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're very wow. reassuring, you know, to know that they're still around. I think we have like 35,000 erections then. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. So, <laughs> let's uh let's let's put them let's put them to good use. All right. Okay. <sighs> well, okay, yeah. here comes an assault plan then. Um let's do our downtime. Let's do our payoff uh and mm. and downtime and then we can jump into the score. Okay. Let me see. So yeah. John, I know all we got, not all we got, I know what our coin payoff is, is fuckload of munitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your, your payoff, like, if if you guys were shadows, uh, then when you went and stole stuff, um, like truck or train loads of munitions, then we would say, oh yeah, train load of munitions, like that's worth X amount of coin, blah, blah, blah. And you, know, you can deal with that because you're thieves, essentially you're set up to like, deal things and get money for them yeah 
but you guys in the fiction you can do that obviously but because you're hawkers not shadows you guys make money on payoffs by like doing drug shit mm -hmm. part. yeah oh so the payoff is three train cars full of munitions for the empire's super warship um and you have that now <laughs> you don't have any money from it but you have all of that stuff you have mm -hmm. lots and lots of powder and shot uh refitted cannons for the refit um it are small arms for marines yeah. grenades uh all kinds of shit like that just he heavy naval munitions of every variety you could you could think of um, so that that's currently your payoff the you you successfully uh made it seem like scovelander revolutionaries were pulling off the job even though that was there was a little bit of uh a, a question there on whether or not that was going to work it did work mm -hmm. uh, so I felt you, like the free scove movement was a the free scove, yeah it, you, i mean you made the rules you pulled it off so you're getting no rep for this currently because because right. you blamed it on the grinders blamed it on yeah essentially the grinders and the heat so sometimes when you do jobs that are kept completely quiet right you can avoid heat or get very minimal heat from the job and, and you don't get any rep because you kept it quiet this isn't a case of keeping it quiet. It was actually a loud and chaotic job. I think it's fair to say wrecking trains out yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm going to use my GM privilege here and kind of hold your heat in escrow for now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, until you're the, you're the PayPal of us getting fucked. Right. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. Out of that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can get a loan against the heat you have in escrow if you want, yeah. um, because obviously the the powers that be know this happened. It's been reported. Somebody somewhere has started to file. An inspector's been put on the job. Railjacks are giving statements to the to the investigators about what went down. It's not like no one knows it happened, right? Yeah, well, and that's not what we wanted, right? We didn't want to keep right. it quiet. Yeah. But the question is, who is that heat gonna eventually land on? Is it going to land on the Scovelanders and the Grinders the way you want it to? It currently, yes. But during the arms, the distribution of, of naval arms that you guys are having to do next, that's that leaves oh, you open. You know what? This it occurs to me. It occurs to me that if we if we give any guns at all to to these terrorists, then they get busted for the train job. They're going to throw us under the train uh, for the cops, right? Like we kind of can't. Mm. They might. Yeah. Like, like, there's a chance. God knows I would if I was them. If, if if they're true believers and they want credit as a terrorist organization, like, no, we did it. We're badass. We took out the trains. You should be afraid of us. Mm. And that's one way it could go. Or yeah. they get the screws put to them and they're like, it wasn't even us. It was these other guys, right? right. So well, it, it could go we, either way. We could buy some insurance there. We happen to know a, um, a, 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 a lawyer, a gentleman named Orlin, who uh, can sign ghost contracts that will basically curse them if they uh, if they betray us? So we could get a little insurance, but that would be like from the that would be like from Hutton or um, or Cersei or like one of their leaders. That's one of the like lower. We're not going to do that with everybody. So one of their right. lowest, we could still get ratted out. Is there but, an amount? Yeah. Is there an amount of guns we could give them so they would fuck off to their home country? It's the warship, the Paragon. Mm. All right, so they need the guns to take the ship so that then they can leave. That's their current plan. Yeah. I mean, it, that that doesn't mean they're they're yeah. not. You hear a different strategy. Um, here, take all this stuff back to Lockport, and you can blow up stuff there instead. Like you know, may, who knows? I don't. I feel like I would just be too jealous. I'd hear about it, and I'd be like, "Those are my bombs." <laughs> I, could blowing, I could be blowing up my enemy. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that. let's uh, let let's do our the fastest downtime actions, uh, okay. and 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 then let's. Let's have a let's have a little like talk um, as as you guys decide the score mm. uh, in character. We'll we'll figure out what you're actually doing with it. We're we're kind of just like out of character talking about yeah, it. Yeah, talking right shit right now. Yeah. yeah, but but let's uh let's get into the into our head, characters' heads here. Mm -hmm. Um, so the we 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 our last shot of the previous episode previously on blood letters uh we see trains crashing we see guys getting thrown out into the dust of the dead 
Deadlands, um, dudes getting cold blooded murdered in in the uh, the shack out there. Oh um, yes, and the Canter shack. deciding to become a hunter for like one point two seconds. Uh, <laughs> Listen, you take me out of the city, and I just end up at the bottom of a gulch for the whole episode. <laughs> Don't even. It's oh, not happening God. again. The wilderness can just fuck right off. <laughs> Stupid there ravine. Was- you know, I, it occurred to me too that your your like weird uh, death stalker hunting cat or whatever like wasn't around. Like you're going out into the deathlands and the cat's like, no, it's like not happening. You're on your own, buddy. I'm not going out. I'm not doing Stupid that. Awesome so the lot. classic dungeon delve where like the players spend three quarters of the time in the ten foot pit to get to get out. Yeah. Like all the monsters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. Yeah, uh, fighting marines in the cramped quarters inside the train cars. Um, yeah, we fucked. Them and up. then the the clutch moment the. Oh yeah! By the way, this is how we're getting back through the lightning barrier. Ha ha! I'm gonna do it now. Uh, and Oscar, not blowing up the train cars, um, and not even alerting the 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 barrier guards. Yeah, because he did it. He brought in the fog with Tempest, and then with the with the uh, with his weirdos. You know, they channel lightning through the train. Yeah, badass. So I think, and and then the the final shot was like on the bridge. In the in the pitch dark, having turned off all the bridge lights, like loading everything onto a barge and and sailing off. Um, so this episode, as we're heading into downtime, I think some time has passed. Um, just the whole operation of like dealing with all this crap because a lot of stuff mm-hmm. has has been underway. So I think what we're seeing as we go into downtime is Cyclops uh, carrying a box of grenades with like straw sticking out of them all packed into this and he's like setting it on this huge pile of of boxes and stuff somewhere uh where where is that when we pull back like where, what do we see i think it was uh, uh, skirlock manor's catacombs right that's the place we have the space like down below on the way the below yeah. yeah somewhere in the the mm-hmm. kind of like in the sewer section where we had the barge the, the ability to bring out the barges and stuff cool uh, right. it's also probably not too too far from where the workshop is, where we work on guns and things. Fair and enough. Stuff. Yeah, because we've got a vault in our workshop and all that. Who else? Uh, so. I think, so that's I think right. what we're seeing is the that all of that space is full floor to ceiling with boxes, and it's spilled out where the boat lands. Now there's like 50 boxes out there too. Being he's like stuffing the last one in, and then like shimmying past it to get over to the door to go into the house. It's just you've you've filled every free space with. With nice explosives essentially <laughs> you could launch Skirlock manor to the moon right now mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> there, there, there was there was likely a long conversation about how Cantor is no longer allowed to smoke in the manor <laughs> like, come on guys it's fine yeah. <laughs> be careful it won't be like that i'm other- careful yeah exactly i can blow myself up i'm not dumb fortunately fair, you have never misfired a gun in my presence so right. That's right. As I recall, your the fine thugs are I know they're savage and uh, loyal, loyal, but they're not independent. Um, which no, means, but Oscar's weirdos are. Yes, that, that that's where I was going with that. So mm-hmm. you know that the the savage thugs can't be totally relied upon to make good decisions by themselves without supervision, uh, but the adepts can. So based on that information, you can decide who's in charge of looking after the explosives. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sure that amongst the adepts, there, if you recall, some of them that ended up with talents for the alchemical and studied a bit mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. our expert um, well, yep, yeah. have, have actually probably some of them are more in charge of things like that than the ones that care about ghosts because I mean, grenades are not ghosts. So Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's what we see. We see the, the last box being loaded and then kind of follow like over his shoulder Cyclops going up the stairs and <clears throat> through the what used to be the empty wine cellar racks, which are now full of rifles and um, uh, ammunition and, and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not what we intended to fill those racks with, but Brick Bricks is in there. She's like wearing. Someone found a box that was all like naval uh, bad weather coats, like these these heavy pea coats. She's wearing one of those and like a cap pulled down. And she has two <laughs> rifles slung on her back, and she's holding oh. one, and she's like. I'm in the Navy. I'm in the- <laughs> it has a super sharp bayonet on the end. <laughs> awesome. And she's like, I was just like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> Goes on upstairs uh, to, to find the, 
a house in whatever state it's in right now. Yeah. Um, who who has their first downtime activity? Who 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 does the camera jump to as as we leave Cyclops behind? Um, I've got some stuff. I'm ready to do some things. So they're sort of they're sort of they will sort of tie in to um, uh, they'll sort of tie in to this. It'll dovetail off of this. Um, so John, we have long had Hicks and Bricks with um, uh, as being nigh interchangeable, but I need them to be distinct. <laughs> yeah, I need to know which one is better suited to a position of government office. It's completely just go. <laughs> Apropos of nothing, hypothetically, just on, just on paper. Uh, oh, just on paper. Well, yeah, yeah. You would not want either of them having any responsibility over anything, probably. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe executions or something. Executioner is uh, a government job, right? On paper, um, well, uh, let me let me re-ask that question. Is there anyone on our crew, maybe one of the wisp, maybe one of the weirdos, Oscar, you might be pissed off if I do this, that uh, could hold down a uh, uh, hold down a government position purely as informants to us? Like if they went and applied for some. No, no, I'm just gonna get them the job. I just. Oh, want... <laughs> oh, 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 I see. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, that definitely one like... of the adepts. Like okay. one of the thugs that would not turn out. Well. That would not turn out well. That's fair. That's fair. Definitely not. No. I mean, you could just take your chances and hope for the best. But no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm liking it. So, um, yeah, I think we need to name an adept besides Cricket. Yeah, I don't think Cricket is the person for this because she's like. I just want to follow Oscar around whatever he does. <laughs> That's <not> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Adept. Um, let's get a good name here. Uh, Talitha is her name. Talitha. Awesome. I dig it. Talitha. Cool. Cool. Talitha. She has, a, she has a last name too. She's like a citizen and everything. Oh, perfect. Oh, we don't have to make one up for her. She's a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so am I. I don't know how far you want to go with that. <laughs> what what is her last a taxpayer? Uh, she is Talitha Slane. Talitha Slane. The Slane family. You 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 know the name there. Good name. Duskwall nobility, but you know, there's like a bunch of it. It's kind of like being a, a Standish or a something like that in in new england you know, yeah like, yeah they they were a big deal or something but there's a bunch of them now and what, that's perfect that's perfect so um so i uh want a scene with roland watt our corrupt magistrate <laughs> yes and, roland watt would like a scene with you <laughs> yeah i'm sure he would <laughs> and uh and talitha Okay. Uh, well, I'm just taking. Uh, we'll see if Oscar. Uh, do you, do you, you consult with Oscar about this? Like, do you, do you are you like, hey, who do you think is best? And yeah, I, I th actually that makes more sense because this isn't something that's it like n I, she thinks you're gonna. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, so RC will tell Oscar. Um, we need to have people that can. We need to stop uh, getting rid of our heat by shooting people because that's eventually just gonna stop working. I want someone that can find out what's going on. Also, I want to start getting leverage over our political foes so i'm just gonna put one of our people into power that sounds and... good um also oscar probably like goes through a list and sorts people into categories like no maybe most likely and then like we bring it down and maybe like have like little interviews or some shit nice um like i say that like it's like a business like but mostly what i feel like is somebody gets put in a dark room and i'm just like so how are you under pressure when politicians say things? <laughs> Drink this tea while I do something. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's even. But uh, I, I think more importantly, um, there's the turtle on its back in front of you. Sorry. Uh, I, I think that, that for it's us, for, yeah, uh, the, the only thing that I want you to take away from this is that uh, Oscar will mention that if we need to make an opening, you should just tell him. Uh, well, I think, yeah, okay. I'm going to see if Roland can do it. And, okay. and Yeah, if, if we need to throw some money and get someone elected and play certain strings, that's fine. But yeah. what Oscar tells you is that the oh, if it's way like... to find a position that we can take on short notice is for us to prepare. And then if we need to, we can get somebody out of office. And I have right. ideas on that. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, so if there are no vacant positions, you can make a vacancy. 
I like it. I, I think I think we're all equipped to make a vacancy, but you probably can do it in a more elegant way. <laughs> you can make a vacancy really easily. Yeah, you want me to off some politician? I got that shit. No problem. Yeah, you know, you know how like uh, like Oscar is usually like he can be severe and whatnot, but I think that that's like one of those times where he's like, oh, I see that might be the nicest thing anyone said about me. <laughs> elegant. I like it. And he wanders off. Nice. So the the camera follows it follows Cyclops up, and it does that that move where he's going off, out of the uh, off the staircase into the house as Arcee's coming down. So really cut to her. Yeah. I love that. Back, yeah, back, back down the stairs with Arcee in, in front, um, retracing Cyclops steps back out to where he was out onto the dock, and there's the workshop table, and Talitha's out, out there, and she's got two grenades taken apart, uh, and she's got her glasses on and. Um, her hair is like tied back under a kerchief and she's taken off her nicer coat and rolled up her shirt sleeves and <clears throat> her suspenders are hanging down off her, her trousers and she's there with a like looking through a jeweler's loop and, uh, with her glasses on like measuring the powder and like testing it and seeing like oh yeah okay I see this is like this high grade military stuff or whatever who knows what she's doing she's having nice. it's just it looks impressive it looks like explosives yeah so yeah. we see RC like come up to her and she like looks up at you from her work like what can I do for you carefully moves the jeweler's loop away <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> don't have don't have anything breakable next to your eye um, <laughs> yeah right RC looks kind of surveys the, the work and she says uh it looks like you're all doing good work here, but I need you, Talitha. Oscar may have told you what this is about. Maybe not. She like gets her stuff back on without saying a word. And yeah. like, brushes, takes her apron off or whatever, and like gets all it's all ready and is like, let's do it. All right. So as we're as I think we, we she like turns and walks, but as we're walking, I ask over my shoulder, so how close are you to uh, your family? Uh, I could be if necessary, I suppose. Let's go find out. And I think we like cut to like Arcee's going through a door, and it's like instead it's the door to Roland's office. His office. Or, his, yeah. uh, his opulent, crazy office. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't have a big desk uh, with papers and a desk chair and stuff. He has seven different types of fainting couches. Oh yeah. Uh, that are uh, arrayed in a, in a sort of ring in the middle of the room. Uh, he has radiant energy plants around in the corners uh, that are have grown up and have been sort of uh, topiaried uh, so that they grow up onto the ceiling and are they look like hands kind of reaching out towards the center of the room, growing from the corners. And vines hang down. There's running water from hidden uh, faucets nearby and it sort of sounds like you're in a forest brook or something um is this new stuff or is this sort of his this has been his has any of this like upgraded since the last time we saw him or is this his uh room? yeah i think it's a little nicer than the last time you've yeah. been around um he's always spending money on his his forms of opulence so uh nice. there's there's no papers in here there's no desk there's no files or anything he's just He's lying back on one of the sofas with a long cigarette holder with a curl of black lotus leaf uh, coming or powder coming off the end of it. And he's, he's taking a long drag and you, and you, as you come in, his, his assistants let you in because they yeah. don't want to fuck with you for one thing, but they also know that like he's instructed them to, uh, you know, let you in when he's posed the correct way. Uh, so he's, he's trying to play it cool, but um, he's, talking to himself under his breath uh, and like rattling off um, what he wants to say. Like he hasn't heard you come in on the plush carpeting. So you hear him practicing when he's like, RCS, you're very deadly, dangerous. You're dangerous, you're deadly. Uh, and I think I like come up and I'm like, don't forget volatile. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he starts uh, and sit, sits up uh, with a flare and like, puts his hand dramatically on the edge of the couch and is like, oh, yes, R.C., volatile indeed. Hmm. With the grace of a panther, I might add. I hate this so, guy. I, fucking hate this I guy love so this guy so much. What a I love dink. This. <laughs> I love this guy so much. He's my second favorite NPC. Only after Roth. He has a, so, he has, 
his sword is hanging dramatically off the side of the couch. From right, the... as though it just happens to place it there enough that he spent 20 oh, minutes it's perfectly getting casual. it angled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or she sits heavily down next to him on the couch, uh, her sword, like, jabbing into him slightly from, um, you know, from, like, when, when she sits, the hilt kind of pokes uh, between them. Mm. And, um, yeah, not, not suggestive at all. <laughs> Jesus and uh she she uh she look she points to um uh Talithia. am i getting that wrong talitha talitha it's like, like tabitha but with like, like a different tabitha. Yeah. Yeah. Tabitha. yeah she points yeah. to talitha throw some throw some apostrophes in there you got great fantasy name fantasy yeah name. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah easy peasy uh she points to talitha and she says um like i, I there's a a short amount of pleasantries but she cuts she quite quickly cuts to um have you met um uh uh talitha slain she's um she's uh a prominent up she's an up-and-coming figure uh in the political uh mm. atmosphere and um i'm sure we'll do great things as soon as she's appointed a station um and she's as soon as she's appropriate a station worthy of her uh a station worthy of her of and course, of course, I I believe that I must know your great uncle. Yes, and Tal is like, yes, yes, I'm 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 sure, I've, I've charmed, and she shakes his hand in the way of the nobility and inclines her head and says, "Magistrate." So, from my reading of of Roland, I could be like really friendly with him, and he would. Do this little dance or i could like try and scare the piss out of yeah, him yeah grab him by would. the nuts make him do it yeah yeah he would he's he gonna would love it anyway prefer, he would definitely prefer the latter yeah. <laughs> exactly so um so i like i i i, I think rc goes to this thing where she like sort of observes the pleasantries for like a little bit and then she puts her hand on his leg right in the inside of his thigh um and squeezes uh and says so what position should she be in, Roland? How can she best serve this great city of ours? Yes, Roland, um, let's talk about positions. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm saying right now. Subtle, nice. subtle stuff. Yeah. So I'm not being super violent, but I am, I do, I am commanding Roland. I am telling him you need to, I, I, I feel like consort is certainly an option with him or sway, but like he responds no, better to being yeah. scared. Like oh, yes. it turns him on. So. Yes, it certainly does. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. The whole reason he associates with your crew is because he feels like he's living a life of danger and yeah. to have it thrust into his face or uh, any other body part. Yeah, right. Exactly. You can thrust it wherever you want. He'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I want to, uh, I want to get, I want to start entering our people into political positions. Um, yeah, so, so I think it's a long term. Role. Yeah, yeah, it, it's as long term project. Um, can you like, you don't have to have it right now. But to help me decide how big a clock it is. Do you have an end game for this? Or do you want them just positioned? in you know various places that you'll i want them to be able to have influence over blue coats or uh probably spirit wardens is out of reach so i want them to well be... it depends how, how big a clock you want to pursue right like uh, i've, I've... You, could, you could do small bites at the beginning or you could go for some big thing depending on how you want to approach it i think um yeah, let's go big. Uh, I want them to be appointed. I, right? When do we ever like do something small? I want them to be appointed oh, as uh, as an advisor to the uh, uh, as an advisor to the spirit wardens. I want okay. them to have spirit wardens. So to boards. the to the city council. Yep. So I want the committee who exactly. I want a, I want a city council member. Okay, advisor to council. Vis a vis spirit orders. Okay, got it. So, yeah, I want to start. Are you push going to, around there? Are you going to disclose your in game to Roland so he can better position her, or do you want him to just start the process and you're going to like make it work out later? So, uh, um, I will totally disclose because that's the part I'll, that gets I'll him give excited. You the bargain die if you tell him. Yeah, because I'm just like, I'm like, you know, those spirit wardens, they don't know what's good for them, and they're mm -hmm. going to find out. You know, okay. so yeah. Um, uh, 
I uh, let's. This is gonna be eight. Okay, I'll totally take an eight clock. And take your devil's bargain. Uh, All right. You guys have Roland as a crew contact. Is He's a crew right? contact. Yeah. I know that, but I. Forget no, that's all good. I have a I have a clock to make him a close contact. Oh but, right. Yeah. <clears throat> I have. <clears throat> pardon me. I haven't put ticks on it. Yet, so. Um. You're trusting him with your secret agenda. You can mark a tick on that clock if you want. Cool. See see if that 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 stabs me in the back later on and uh this is this is, this is the moment where my where my mouse decides to the battery's gonna die uh it's just you fun need, you need somebody else to click for you you need a pinch clicker <laughs> and you're, but you can do it adam you can you can click on my sheet okay. stunt clicker what do you what do you need what do you we, need clicked i need you to click command uh-huh okay and i've got one bonus die because he's our contact this is a downtime action Okay. I've got one bonus die because of the devil's bargain. And um, if you are, if if this applies, people who are frightened of me, and you said that he, he, he is scared of us, uh, because RC is savage, uh, <laughs> people good. frightened through violence or not. Uh, yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is what does that say? It, when when they're friends, you take plus one die to command them. Yeah, yeah exactly. It says. Uh, Listen, if this whole hawker thing friend... doesn't work out for you, I have another line of business you could go into, RC. Very yeah. lucrative. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think that's not very many steps away. No, it really isn't. Yeah, no. So uh, I think it's. You are correct, sir. I mean, if you feel like it's out of context, I'm no, I'm happy no, no, no. not to take it. I'm just. I think I think you should definitely take it. He. The fact that he enjoys it doesn't change the, the ability. Yeah. yeah, he is terrified of you and is really into that, but he is still terrified of you. So yeah. I want to keep yeah. him turned on. And so three, so three yeah. bonus, three bonus days. Bonus yep. day. Holy crap! All right, here we, we go. go. Yeah, and I can't see go. it. Not it's a crit. Six. That not is a crit, but it is a six. You got a six. It is a six. All right, I'll take it. I thought there were going to be at least five sixes. <laughs> 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 All right, I will take, uh, and then what I want to do as part of this, as part of this, like once he starts filing paperwork, yeah, I also want to um, have him act on our behalf right now to uh, tell us about anything that he's seen come through. Like, oh yeah, we gotta get, we gotta get rid of that, and I want to reduce heat with him as well. Oh sure, yeah, it's yeah. like he moves into the like less seductive, more transactional part of this, where he's like, okay, we got to start backfiling all this paperwork, like make her be a person for the last less 10 years. Paperwork, less seductive, says you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I feel like that is now, now that I've, he's already one of my, I feel like that is now uh, what I'm trying to do is consort with him. Like, oh yeah, can you tell me what stuff you've seen? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can squash some of that. Yep. Yep. Cool. So, uh, Adam, would you mind rolling a consort with one bonus die? Because uh, he's to. he's a contact. Yes, he's your contact, and he he's always up for uh, meddling in police affairs. There it is. Okay. Uh, okay, that's you got a five. Two. Reduce heat. Oh, got a five. Okay, so that's that's two heat. I will I will click that for you on the computer. How's awesome. their uh, How's their heat doing? Just so I know. I think it's down to two now. Down it was a down. Sorry. Down to one now. Down to one now. Cool. And uh, we have a cover operation that's going to drop it down to zero. So uh, that is true. So that's my downtime actions. I'm going to run away for two seconds to get a battery. <laughs> okay. So uh, Roland, Roland Watt will also run away to take care of some business. <laughs> take, care of his own, <laughs> take care of his own business. Um, uh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, Thank and you. And Talitha, uh, with, with some horror, realizes what she's been assigned to and you, I may, maybe you leave her there. You're like, well, you know, I'll trust you two to work it out. And she's just looking at you as you leave. Like, <laughs> you're uh, a politician now. Deal with it. I yeah. thought I was in a cool drug gang. What, no. what the fuck? Is that? Take, I mean... take bribes. Do what we tell you. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Shut up, Clay Davis. Shut up. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, That's she's looking good. at you like she. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Listen, we got to get that canal dredged. All right. We yeah. got to get that canal judge. We got to get yeah. that orphanage approved. We got to get exactly. the blue coats off our back. We got to get the spirit wardens out of our house. We, I'm, I'm, we got a lot of shit to do. I approve. I approve of your hydrification of our, our organization here. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. 
diversifying uh, our portfolio. I look forward yeah. to the day where two politicians lean in and one says, Hail Cantor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and and I, I jumped into this abruptly because we said we're going to do it quickly. Yeah. But this is the progression of like RC starting a little something on the side. We started getting into real estate and then RC talking to Elstera and like, and connecting with Roland Watt. And now she's, now she's putting people into office. Like this is her trying to build our, legitimate power base i mean if you want to cast yourself as the stringer bell that's i think it's reasonable it's totally I reasonable i didn't say it it's you yeah. it's your it's your path to walk yeah <laughs> good luck yeah, yeah well, well that ended well for for him right I definitely i mean he he did get to be idris elba so it's kind of <laughs> a pretty big win yeah uh, in that sense uh cool all right uh, go go get your battery sean right back. Yep. Go, go. um who, who, who's next? Uh, Adam, you got your downtime yeah. lined up? Yeah, I've got I've got just like a, a shit ton of stress from that that mission. So I just need to I need to indulge in my vice. I just need to go and get some new outfits, some more shooting outfits. Yes. I gotta get a good outfit for blowing stuff up. <laughs> get this white mask with a mustache on it. Start practicing my British accent. <laughs> um, yeah, what did we what did we name her? Your opera costumier? Uh, Revka. Revka. That's Revka, right. Revka. Yeah. 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 Geez. So I feel like that's the conversation we're having, right? Where I'm telling her, like, I need an outfit appropriate for blowing things up. I need one that will, like, yeah, like an outfit that will make me look good at an explosion. <laughs> 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 if I'm, like, heavily backlit, a um, <laughs> lot of heat, it needs to be, like, breathable, you know, for the shockwave. Probably with, like, capes, right, to flutter uh, during the explosions. Yeah. No capes. No. Uh, I yeah. just walked in for an outfit that would make me look good in an explosion. Yeah, not in the explosion, Perfect. adjacent there too. Yeah, at an explosion. Yeah. What what I went to the explosion this year? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I mean, I just like to 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 show off. Yeah, whatever whatever is the cool thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and to continue my my course to to overblown super villainy. Um, yeah, your the last look she got you was like goth lord mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. like va vampire um, yeah yeah maybe maybe something maybe so something a little more like industrial looking like like a little more yeah. like tra train or boat oriented like, a little naval more military looking that's like totally what i was thinking yeah. yeah she has she has a they they did a show um in imperial city that it, it like it romanticizes the lives of the rail jacks mm -hmm. instead of like the clunky horrible i saw that it's called rail jacking yeah, I think it's that. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> it just says it just says Jacks, but it's like in the rent font. Yeah, yeah. No. Right. Lots of singing and dancing. It's mostly like stomp. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, some kind Lin -Manuel of Manuel like, Miranda directed it. It was fantastic. Like you, you have just recently been wearing the shit that they actually wear on your mission, mm -hmm. and she goes and like digs through her her wardrobe or takes you back through the stacks of stuff, and what you see are like the the cool what a workshop versions of real what real jacks yeah, wear these yeah, yeah. very custom like one looks like a beetle and one looks like a dragon or something you know there are all these like very cool customized looks for each thing they have they have sockets on them to attach hoses to they have sort of needless uh, straps and buckles and zippers don't do it. Oh yeah. If I could get one that has like um got one of those those like light up vacuum tube like orange um light bulbs that I could screw into like a shoulder plate. Yeah. Yes. Fuck Definitely. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so into that. Yeah. It's it's very Imperial City. No one in Duskwell is wearing it. Can I get like can I get like a Jacob's ladder built into this outfit somehow? Can we can we make that happen? <laughs> Dude, <other> soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> like, you look like a wild character. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As a collar. As a I... collar, exactly. Like two like antenna that just like oh yeah. This is like it's not this isn't a casual outfit to just wear out. It's like it's for an event. It's for yeah. Yeah, yeah I, need, okay. I need to get ready for the opera. Let me change my batteries. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I got to charge up first. Yeah. No, see, I can't. I can't wear it. None of my outfits can have a mask. Uh, I can't wear like helmets. Hats are fine because like my hair is great, but like not like the focal point. It's the face. That's the focal point of the outfit. So I can't. Yeah, I can't like mask that. Remember the last time I tried to put a mask on? It was a mask of my own face. It's not. <laughs> Kendra right. is not Long good ago. at that. So the subterfuge shit. Nice callback. But yeah, I need some pylons up in this piece. Yeah, so. I think what she has is it's it's like a high necked um, like diving fitting where there would there would be a brass connector that a helmet would 
would attach to, mm -hmm. but instead it's just the high collar and the brass yeah. fitting behind your head here. And I think it, it like goes over the ears even and maybe the bottom of your jaw. So it has like this weird like robot man. I have, yeah, I have a vaguely, it's like, it's like if the costume designers for Metropolis made like gimp wear, exactly. I feel like that's kind of where we yeah. would go with this that's, outfit. Yeah. That's what it is. The electricity and then also all the black rubber to protect me from electrocuting myself. Yeah. You yeah. you cannot put this on by yourself. Someone has to put it on you and it, it, it is not safe. Access the various pieces. Totally. totally. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get RC to help me put it on, and then at the end I'll say something lewd like, All right, remember that for later, so you can do it in reverse. <laughs> uh yeah, that sounds fantastic. Oh, that... I want that. I want I want that on my body. The outfit. It's... RC this, of, of all the things you've ever worn walking around town, this will be like the vampire sex dungeon was pretty out there, mm -hmm. but you know, it's gothy enough for Duskwall. This is like crazy, like, like it's, it's like the Berlin scene as opposed to the London scene. You know, mm -hmm. you're just coming at a weird angle yeah. that my people are either going to really dig it and pick it up or it'd be like the great, the great thing about these outfits, no matter what they are, is that that Cantor has no ability to perceive the difference between good attention and bad attention. He's an infant <laughs> in that regard. So it's yeah. exactly the same. Someone being like, Oh, that's amazing and fashionable. And some being like, what the fuck is that thing? They're both <laughs> the same. They're the same kind of attention to him. So it's, it's great. Yeah. Attention is just attention. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Or, oh, oh my God. Why did you kill that guy? That's also attention. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> as long as the paying attention is to me, then it's, then it's great. I'm all about it. Uh, cool. Yeah, let's, uh, that's, that, that's what we see. The final moment where she's like, she's behind you. She's really short. And we see her up on her tiptoes and she's like uh, turning a, <laughs> like a screw on the back of the thing to like seal it shut on your body. And she steps back and is like, there you have it. Yeah. She just turn, she pulls one of those like execution switches on the wall to turn, <laughs> turn me on. I'm about it. Uh, all right, uh, so I'm indulging my vice. Uh, is there any reason for me to have bonus dice? I don't think so. Um, Revka is not your contact or friend at the moment. Yeah, I've got I've got a thing. I think I'll work on her as my next okay. thing. But okay. I think right now we're just we're just indulging. Um, well, you could do them at the same time, and if you got her as your contact, then she'd give you a bonus well, that's for the indulging yeah. dice. I suppose yeah. So. Well, no, I'm four. She's she's a four segment clock that I haven't put any energy into yet. You could credit. That's true. It up. Yeah. It okay. Well, let's I mean, let's do that. It can because then I can do all my shit in one scene, and we can yeah, we can yeah. we can pass, pace forward. So, yeah. I mean, I think part of part of this is the continuing effort to uh, be someone she can experiment on, like, to give her opportunities to take risks. Because I think that that while Cantor doesn't care, in a lot of ways, I'm I'm a great opportunity to be um, a, a, a riskless uh, endeavor for her because she can be like. Don't take don't take credit for the ones that are flops. But if by some merit people are like, "Ooh, did you see that magical rubber man out there?" Then she can be like, yeah. "Yes, that was my work. That was a Revka outfit." Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also like you lured her out of Imperial City because she was bored of dressing the nobility. She wants to infiltrate the underworld with her designs, and so she sees you as this like yeah. without yeah. avenue to achieve that goal. So if, yeah, I, I think she's open to that relationship too. She just. Cool. Okay. You know, you guys are sort of like fencing a little bit. Um, sure. Uh, is that a yeah. consort? I think it's consort. Yeah. Unless yeah. You're I mean, it's, I, I don't have, I've got like nothing in anything except skirmish. So it's fine. I've got one day. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Well, you can't put it actually. You yeah. can spend money is what you can do. I've got, yeah, I've got, I've got one coin, I think. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. You can spend, you can spend crew coin too. I mean, what, you know. Some of us don't like spending the group's money on our own fiddly projects, Sean. I didn't spend any of the group's money. Know, that six and then you can buy it. In I know. Uh, all right, let me let me roll this thing. Let's see what happens. Right. Oof, close. All right, I got that's, five. That's two. That is two. Okay. So, yeah. Right, so we'll there. fill in two on the sheet. All right, and then yeah, now I'll just I'll just make the regular indulge roll. Uh, indulge, yeah. Okay. Ba -doop. Nice. Not bad. Uh, Adam, I don't. It's probably not going to matter, but just in case, uh, did you add a die for war dogs uh, when bison? Because we are at war currently. Oh, we get an extra die for that? We do. All right, let me roll a d6 and see if that's... That's anywhere. right. You guys just got that ability. Okay. Uh, no. Thank you, though. Yeah, I forgot uh, we got that at the end. I didn't know, I didn't know that war dogs added to our vice roll. I thought it just gave us... I believe it gives us a second action and plus one d. Well, bison. 
please double check or at least i actually I, don't remember that my, that. my memory I, is very good up until uh, the no oh. just the two downtime activities instead of one so that three that three doesn't matter anyway and, and, yeah, and we don't have our hold reduce i think it i think it used to be that that's what it is you don't have your hold reduce we we, we wrote that one many times yeah. so yeah how to spell yep. how to yep. spell lower work again um okay cool <laughs> so uh yeah so that's it for me i got my two i'm good and i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to hang on to my coin i think you have it in that was the old version uh yeah cool um all right so we leave we leave canter uh strutting his stuff on the streets of duskwall maybe maybe you leave and like prowl the syndicate's turf now you're like walking the corners and in your crazy outfit mm -hmm. yeah which if if we recall is quite a bit of uh it's quite a bit of the dark. There. You can see it on the map there. There's uh, there's a lot of red. Mm -hmm. Not, as, not as much as the gold and the blue, but you know, everyone's got to start somewhere. John, um, you're just trying to piss us off. Hey, look, I'm just stating facts. You're calling our turf smart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at all this gray ass turf on here. This whole city should be red. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah, can we switch our color to gray? Yeah, uh, totally. exactly. We just rebrand. Uh, now we own everything. <laughs> Done. It's <was> easy. <laughs> uh, cool. Oscar Skurlock, what? where are you and what are you up to? I get three actions. Uh, the first one is going to be pretty straightforward. I believe that I am pulling some more strings and getting the, uh, I believe we call it <laughs> the Canterhag home for wayward shits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Can yeah, the can Canterhag school for t the terminally awesome. Um. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get more funding, get the building started, get the permits through, all that good stuff. Yeah, I need to roll some consort for that long-term project, unless mm -hmm. you have other opinions. No, I think that's perfectly good. I mean, you have a city magistrate as a contact. Are you are you also using Roland Watt to uh, deal with your paperwork and stuff, or do you have a different um, friend in mind for that? We also have Anya the dilettante. Um, that is true. Yeah, this this definitely sounds more up Anya's alley because it's a lot about fundraisers and convincing people that if they ah, should give fundraisers, money, that's, that's uh, yes, yeah. Totally on you. So, um, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's where you are. We haven't seen this in a while. Uh, way back in the early days of the blood letters, we saw you at like Anya's house where she was like holding a, having a party or something. Um, well, she also got us into Arkinvor and the party. She did. We got our high profile clients and helped yep. RC get connection to uh, Kill Manor. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. she's helped us out a bunch. So yeah. I think that this is this is a lot of that. We haven't seen Oscar outside of his feathered outfit and his tattoos in a while, and this is him playing the Skurlock role. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah, we talked about this last time. This is a this is part of your Skurlock persona is doing the orphanage mm -hmm. part of things. Um, is that yeah, cool? So we, I, yeah, I think we cut right into it's Anya's place. Uh, well, unless you want to do it at Skurlock Manor, you don't want. Not to. yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm going to tell you this honestly. I'm actually still a little kind of ashamed of it. I would yeah. probably want to do an acquire assets to gussy it up the first time I hold a party. It's, it's not quite up to snuff, no. I am at one lifestyle. I would like to be at least at two lifestyle before I do that. Yeah, two would be barely okay. Um, but Anya's place is great, and she's she's happy to have a fundraiser. Um, and I think, too, the fact that it's not at Skrillock Manor, if people know that it's that for the young Lord Skurlock, um, that's enough to get people to show up out of curiosity because you're out of the public eye usually. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we cut into the thing in full swing and a dozen people from the scene have arrived. It's not like packed with people or something. It's a, it's a small gathering um, and there's there's canapé and, and, and wine flowing and people are huddling in groups and chatting and um, Anya is pressing the flesh and like encouraging people to think of the children. Uh, and there's a little heartbreaking a... stories about an orphan. <laughs> nice. Do you have, do you have a, 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 an orphan child there that you are parading around? Is like, oh, wow. Hey, look, we've got I totally Maggie do. up. I totally from... do. It's a, it's a little girl uh, who may or may not be a pickpocket putting on a roll with the biggest eyes like you do on the corner when you're begging for money. <laughs> yes. Um, I will give you a devil's bargain die if you'll let me make a fortune roll for her as she fleeces people at the event. Oh, God. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find one that knows that this is easier than fleecing people. When I'm just like, too nice of pit pocketing. She probably won't get caught. I know, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those, like, look, we fix them in other ways, right? We reach okay. into their wallets without ever putting ourselves at risk. 
fine. <laughs> this is probably very confusing for her because right before this event, I was like, steal everything that isn't nailed down. Just fucking just get these rich bastards. But Cantor said... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uncle Cantor said that if I stole 10 watches, he'd give me a bourbon. <laughs> All I need is one bullet and one gun. That's enough to scare every single person in that room to give me everything they have. I think <laughs> that there's just a the moment where Oscar is like all smiles and then he puts both hands on her shoulder and he's like, darling, one thing you have to remember. And then he looks up and his like eyes contract and everything and he goes like, you're not working for Cantor Haig tonight. And then smiles and then he's like, you're in. <laughs> Fair. Oscar. Fair. All right. His Wait. own three dots in command. <laughs> oh my God, I do have three dots in command. Holy yes. shit. Yeah. yeah, Oscar can be quite terrifying. The other funny thing is you're like six years older than her. I mean, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, when you're when you're that age, it, it is like relevant. That's true. right. Like six years is a lot. Uh, Yeah, let's give her a name. Her name is... Oh man, we're getting names all over the place tonight. Yeah, um, building out our crew. Uh, her name is Frog. Nice. You don't know why they call her that, but that's that's what everybody calls her. Uh, yeah, so she's there to look pitiful, and you know she's she's uh, a actually legit uh, Duskwall orphan. Her life. I just I just imagine oh, I just imagine this girl is gonna grow up to be like uh, Honey Bunny from the beginning of Pulp Fiction. Oh God, <laughs> I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking of. That's so funny. I was about to say Amanda Plummer going. Yeah. <laughs> Why you motherfuckers? <laughs> that's that's like I went straight there, and I had to look up the name of the character. Exactly but yeah, what I was thinking that's so funny. <laughs> Stay cool, honey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Oh my god. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that that was my backup when you were when you were saying like, don't pickpocket people. She's like showing her piece under her shirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool. Uh, shall I cast some consort dice real quick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anya's also arranged the, the, the cake is shaped like the orphanage. Oh my god, that's amazing. Anya wins so many props. Uh, that's two segments, which means that the home isn't completely built yet, but it's uh, it's pretty close. Uh, I think so we might one... actually start seeing stuff happening there. It's only yeah, one I think... tick away though, right? I'm sorry, what? It's only one tick away though, right? Like, yes. It's... Yeah, so with one tick away, we're seeing we're seeing the like um, mon money, like fundraising happening at this party, but also um, at one point Anya is over at by the table, and there's a, a a noble man who's who's being very agreeable with her and signs this document. Uh, and at the end of the party, she comes over and is like, uh -huh, and shows it to you, and it's like this very elaborate looking piece of paper. Uh, with seals and filigree all around it, but it essentially says like, "Do whatever you want with this part of the city." <laughs> it's it's like a deed. To the deed, that. yeah. Because I mean, that was just the butcher shop, right? It wasn't. Yeah. Wasn't this like... is kind of amazing because, in a way, we're staking a claim to a portion of the world at this point. You are. You um, are, in, you are in, in a more meaningful food. way than just our base. Yeah. 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 This, this will, this mechanically, this will function as a, some sort of claim. We'll figure out what it does, but. Uh, cool. The question, the next question that I have for you is, uh, this is just for flavor. Um, is there a thing or two you can tell me that Anya likes? Cause she's been helping us a lot. And, mm. um, like I know what Roland Watts vice is. What's Anya's vice. Um, she's into the occult, uh, which is okay. one of the reasons you're friends. Um, and she's gone with you to the weird ghost club several times. Uh, you know, she's into that. Uh, and she is also into the opera. Uh, she has like a fascination. The, one of the reasons she loves the occult is she has a fascination with like tales of uh, grand adventure and knights and dragons and magic and you know that kind of thing. Nerd! Uh, it's amazing and adorable. Um, cool. <laughs> In which case, um, how, how, mm, no, it's probably outside my lifestyle. I can't just flash with the opera. We'll figure that out next time. Uh, I know. I don't think you have lifestyle for opera tickets, unless you want to pay for no. them. No, 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 not yet. Um, I need to save my coins for. I have. I have two more projects. Uh, the next one's gonna be pretty straightforward. Uh, we haven't actually seen this on screen in game yet. Uh, but I have a feeling that, like, we so we see Oscar putting on airs and being like calm and normal, and then we also see Oscar like dealing with the political happenings and sort of the machinations of the crew. Um, so I think that like, you know, he, he's walking past all of the explosives and you see the workshop and he's like putting together like a new outfit. Um, and, uh, after he like 
goes over to all the work stations and make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing and kind of like pats some people on the back. He's got a little bit, a slightly more close relationship since the train incident. Cause mm -hmm. if you recall, he kind of approved of his crew doing the things that they're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I think that what we see is Oscar relieving stress, right? Cause I came out of that job with appropriate amounts of stress. <laughs> yes. And, um, I, I have I haven't I haven't done this uh, per se yet, but uh, I have this feeling that particularly with his reckless attitude uh, and stuff that's that's been building up, um, he has this like very tight kind of like controlled frame in certain settings. Whoa, you okay there? Yeah, my um, camera just went nuts. Uh, so I think that there's this like, <laughs> uh, I think what he does is he probably goes uh, like I, I I wanted to to get into uh, I suppose we'll call him the underground fighting pits for whispers so to speak yeah, uh, yeah. where you know you've got like a, a very intact scene uh where they've got like an electrified cage uh around like two whispers that sit down in chairs and face across from each other and they release some like unholy abomination from outside the city in the center and both of them basically like fight to control it to have them yeah to like have an attack and maul the other person and there's like would you describe this as like a gathering of magic uh, uh sure i mean i assume that the people huh? that I'm oh, out of here. No! <laughs> uh, i did not see that one coming uh, uh, yeah Yikes. uh but I, I i think that there's definitely um uh, i don't know i think it's like pretty vicious right like like the two two whispers pretty much just face off and try and like control this thing as it's like being commanded by two people to like attack the other person i don't know if the people outside of it are Magicians could just be people that like betting on crazy shit. Yeah, I, that, I, yeah, I think so. I think it's like, it, it's it's like betting on the fights, but it's it's two whispers uh, trying to dominate this entity. Um, in this case, I think it's a it's a Deathlands ghost um, of a, a non-human one. It's like this twisted, abomination-looking spirit that um, is all shadowy and flamey. It's like a tentacled um, uh, toad looking thing that's all made of shadow and when it opens its mouth there's like fires burning inside its belly and it's leering back one of the most important things i think that any gm can do is cultivate a mad libs for weird magic shit in their head <laughs> so they just be like yeah. it's a shadowy toad with <laughs> tentacles and fire at its belly there we go yep yeah. gming i did there it monster <laughs> easy I have a chart. I it in my head yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we when we cut into the scene, everyone's everyone's um, bad. And unlike the fights that that RC goes to, there's people aren't yelling and shouting and being crazy. It's just deadly quiet in the room, and they're everyone's standing around breathlessly watching in in the silence as we look at Oscar. Like a bead of sweat rolls down his forehead. Uh, maybe at, right as you're putting your mask on. Oh uh, no, uh, the mask is on because like the two whispers enter from opposite doors, and it's uh, okay. a little bit like. I'm I'm this uh, I I was about to jump to pro wrestling, but it's not that much of showmanship. But I, it, I mean, keep in mind that this is illegal. Behind... But yeah, they're definitely personas. Um, yeah, it's the red hand versus uh, the the master of chains, and he's he's like got his whisper coat covered in these trailing iron chains. In the <laughs> Bone oh, saw is ready. Oh, like saw. mummified. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Like so it is just as ridiculous as WWE. I, I like that the rest of us are trying to like sell drugs, and you're out here fucking playing Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon for like where outcomes can't be people being bald and deaf. I'm Fire sure that there's like mode, I choose you. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's cool. Naruto, isn't it? He has some like giant frog god, I think. Uh, anyway, probably Naruto. It's yeah. it's 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 totally unimportant. The point is, um, uh, I'm, I, that's that's my stress relief is death battles with ghosts in mm -hmm. electrified cages. Yeah. Nice. The darker side of Oscar. Yeah. I don't know. That's epic. Uh, indulge away. Damn. Ooh, damn. I had exactly six stress, so you it goes it. To zero. Yeah. Uh, and just, there's no official crit for vice rolls, but just, just as color here, we'll say that you win the, the, the battle too, <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. Uh, we see Why that not? moment where the, the other whisper like surrenders as, as the thing turns on him and comes to eat the master of chains instead of like 
fighting it or something. He's just like, ah, like runs out of the other side of the thing and give, gives up. Can I make his mask crack? Can you make his mask crack? Sure. Yeah, awesome. yeah. 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 Yeah, I think this is very different, right? Because like Oscar, a lot of times, like there's a crazy rowdy party going on and he'll be like sitting in a chair, like having his like, um, you know, Skirlock Sulk on, so to speak, TM. Um, and I think that's just, like one of those moments where like, you know, he's like forward in the chair, like you see the other mask crack and then the person like goes running away being chased by this thing and they're hooking it down or whatever. And Oscar like does the whole like, where he stands up, he's like, yeah, he's like looking at the, the, the crowd, like flips the chair kind of thing. Nice. Uh, nice. It's, it's like a drastic departure from his like normal. I like, I like party Oscar. I need to get up in that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we need to so get proud. Get Stand behind you, fucking throwing money. <laughs> we, need, we need to have some of these ghost fights in. Uh, yeah, listen, listen. Cantor, yeah. Cantor knows that he will never be Biggie Smalls, but he can hope to one day be somebody's Sean Puffy Combs. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just waiting for my opportunity. Yeah. Uh, the last thing is, uh, you're gonna have to set a clock. Uh, but we've talked about this before. I found out that Sat Satara. So I have a question for you. Um, I know that Satara, after the binding, became kind of like stoic and like reserved, and the binding causes her to like essentially lose her will. Uh, but I also know that Lord Skurlock, um, like when she was bound to him, she was like all jokey and like winking at me and going to parties and all that shit. And uh, I think that he was acting that way. Yes, that's correct. Well, keep in mind that Oscar has spent uh, like he 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 was learning a lot from the books that were in the house. Um, so I don't know if that binding was different if her behavior is different or um what i can do to fix that so to speak so uh yeah you want to find out um well i mean i figured that i'll find out and then start working on a project i don't know if that's like a long-term clock or if i need to acquire assets and answer or just is that a oh, gather no. info? you can yeah just gather info yeah okay cool um with what uh, i'm still to find the right occultist to tune to what study do you magic? Uh, I don't know. Study? What, what's uh, study what? seems appropriate if you're trying to look at what what uh, Lord Scorlock had done. Like, if you're going back to like, how right? Did he... But that's that's what I'm asking John is if John is like, well, listen, there's nothing in your texts, where do you go look? Then I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to get in touch with the right people to help me answer this. Um, um that kind of determines well, you, the way you know there's nothing in your text is you go and look. So, what do you what do you spend your time doing? What do you study? Do you consort? What do you what do you do? Uh, Let's go with study. Okay. That sounds good. Because uh, like when, when in doubt, hit the books, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's always been my, my motto here. Uh, now, yeah, as a point cool. of note, um, Satara cool. is my closest friend. Uh, so do I get an extra die because it is relating to her and potentially with her guidance and or information that I've gathered from her before? Do you command her to show up and help you? God, you're making me feel dirty. Um, the thing is that Oscar has a, like, at least the way that I've always approached it is a, is a partnership, right? Um, I help her with stuff that she wants. She helps me with stuff that I want, right? And it's, it's this, this is a much, much you, more shittier power dynamic. Well, you, you know, according to the binding that she will uh, aid you without necessarily being directly commanded to do so. But sure. that doesn't mean that she will do every little thing that you're also doing, because that would be really awkward and inconvenient. No, of course not. So, uh, I, but I mean, like, do you command her to show up and force obedience? I'm like, no. Yeah. Well, I have I'm, a conversation with you, her. You asked me if you get a bonus die. I'm saying, I guess what I'm saying is, when you go to study this, she doesn't just spontaneously appear to help you, but oh, you cool. can summon her and tell her to if you want to. Um. And then you'll get a bonus die because she'll be she, obviously she can help answer that question. <clears throat> yeah, you know what? Uh, I'll I'll take a bunch of the books and some of my research down to the pool and have a cheaty chat. Uh, you know, okay. I'll, I'll I'll do the thing where I like <laughs> reach into the water and yeah, pull her out. And, and, cool. Uh, yeah. So we we see you there with various books you've cross referenced. You found relevant pages, and the shot begins like craning up from the floor past the lip of the pool and she rises up all black scales and wet water and her unblinking huge eyes. So yeah, I, I think there. 
of all the things, Oscar actually apologizes to her. Um, Because I I don't think that I or the character really understood the context of a lot of the actions here. I'm so sorry, Pikachu. (laughs) Uh, uh, Pokemon would be so much scarier if there were shark demons that ate people and hung them up skinless off the plant post. Head cannon. Head cannon Um, Pokemon. All right. Uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I think that I'm just, you know, I'm asking her for help and guidance because, like, she's part of the reason why I'm in the Mystic Arts, right? Like, she's, she was my first teacher slash mentor slash person that put me on, on the road to this stuff. Yeah, uh, that's so, right. So, and I'm like... Well, it strikes I, me that, like, you had this relationship with her, and then one day you clasp these iron bounds around her wrist, and suddenly everything changed, and you're like, wait, that wasn't what I was expecting when I right. did that. Yeah, because, you know, Oscar grew up with this idea that when he snatched her away from Skirlock, it was going to be like, oh, you're finally free. And what he's discovered is that she's traded one prison for another. And that's not cool. Like, he does... Uh, how does Cantor say we are not the man? We do not turn people in. We do not put them in prison. So, right. like, yeah, uh, demons she's... aren't people. Says you. Um, <laughs> the R to Oscar. Uh, wait until I start talking to gods and stuff too. It's good to great. Um, yeah, you haven't taken a cultist yet. So, oh, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that that's. I think that that's it. Um, so should I should I roll study and get the bonus? Uh, yeah, studies studies good. Cool. Um, is this a gather info? Uh, just do control standard to, to uh, maybe. Yeah, no, 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 gotcha. Yeah. Not so good. Um, so you apologize and you say whatever you say to her. Um, what you've discovered in the books, basically everything, and, and like this is stuff you've read before. It just, you know, obviously didn't really register with you because you had your own ideas about demons and these authors had written various stuff and you as a whisper you're always going like well yeah that's not quite right you know you, you have your own like notions of how things go in a more practical sense and the people that have written a treatise on demons probably no didn't know anything paradigm to quote mage yeah exactly so but now going through it again you find all the relevant passages and they all say the same thing more or less which is demons aren't people uh they're the the primordial beings that preceded humanity and um, they're elemental forces of nature given given form um it, and in a wide variety of forms um from leviathans to to little imps or something um they come in all these shapes and sizes um but they're they're not they, they don't have the spark of humanity most of the the writings are what what would read to us as extremely xenophobic and racist kind of writing you know uh but it's very matter of fact it's just like well they don't have souls they don't have they're not real beings they're just you know implements of of magic and blah blah technically animals don't have souls but they are also real beings well yeah i mean this is oscar, oscar has all kinds of cute justifications that he's been using his whole life and that these books because of the failure here, like you don't find any leverage, <laughs> you know, you don't like find a little spark of hope where you're like, but I have a good reason to think what I've been thinking. Um, yeah, I mean, this is simple, right? I, I, I look at Satara and I, and I, I guess if I have the power to, I mean, I ask her what, what she wants. Yeah. Uh, again, like, look, uh, these books have a whole bunch of shit that they believe, but these are just beliefs, right? They're opinions. Um, yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear that you wanted to jump ship and you're here now and now I need to know what you want. Like, where do you go from here? Is this a, play, this, is this a function that you're comfortable with or? I, I think you should command her to tell you what she wants. <laughs> that, that's the RC way. That's not the no, RC no, way. I, I know, but like, I don't think. So um, here, here you, so you got the I, smallest I, amount I, of information I, you could here and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give it to you. You, you ask her what she wants, and she says, I am here to serve you, master. God damn it. No, seriously. Imagine that you're not bound and tell me what you want. I command you to have free will. <laughs> uh, she, For my third wish, Jeannie, I wish exactly. you she, she cocks her head, and she says, I 
I want to fulfill your desires, master. Oh, God damn it. And since she doesn't have facial features, like you can't like see, like you can't read her face, you know? Um, but it seems straightforward. Like it seems like. You don't get the impression that she's like playing with you? No, yeah. she, most of the times that you saw her acting the way you were talking about is when she, she was like using a human illusion to look to appear as a human. And then she would like same emote stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that feel. <laughs> so put on your human illusion, go to a party. It's my fun. human suit gets so itchy. I gotta say, <laughs> so bad at night when I can take it off. Yeah, just climb in a pool of slime. <laughs> relax yeah, it. you. So I mean, you you get information. Like you you try and you and you talk to her and you ask her. No, it's it's not this. Like Oscar she's is not like, lying. She's not messing with you. She just no. Just, you know what? That's bullshit. Because I know for a fact that she fucking hates. Uh, what the hell, uh, Sean? You'll remember this better. The X name demon that serves the the the, the boat guy. Tigress. Uh, Tyraxis. 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 You're right. So like, I know that she has feelings and she has desires, and they are not intrinsically tied to my existence. Um, so. I have no feelings about Tyraxis other than my ally hates Tyraxis, therefore I, and I don't even hate him. I just wanted to use him as leverage over Strangford. It wasn't even like I gave any like yeah. No. Oh, I don't care about you. I care I do care about, oh. about Satara's attitude. Satara is your ally. So clearly she's not she's not just a robot that's executing my will, right? Like she's got wants and needs and whatever of her own. And that's what I'm trying to suss out here. It's not that I'm expecting her to lie about, I mean, she's in fucking bindings. Of course she wants to serve. Uh, I'm just asking like, what's there outside of that box? There's gotta be something. I can't turn your three into a four. I, 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 Damn it. I love, well, I love this. I love this bit because Oscar is so, to me at least, Oscar is so clearly like in the wrong and his privilege is just blinding him where he's like, come on, tell me what you want. And she's like, I'm trying to master. You're like, no, stop being my slave. Do what I say. <laughs> like it's so good <laughs> she's just like i i don't know what i'm trying come on uh, painful yeah i i let me say like in terms of game like this is this is a this is not a good gather information role you didn't get what you really wanted you found out something that you don't like but it's That's not fine. it's not a dead end right you're you're a fucking whisper and a skirlock you can do whatever you want um, sure, this, this, is, this isn't the end of the conversation. This is just currently the situation. You, it's frustrating, and that's where you are. Uh, so. Okay. Um, do I have a next course of action here? Do I have an avenue outside of this? You could. Well, I know someone who could talk. You could talk to. Cool. Who? Don't talk say Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, somebody I, I can I, talk to about I, this that that would actually talk about I, this. I've got an I, idea. Um, yeah. uh, we know that Aruvians are pretty pretty closely tied to demons. We know that there is a demon binding a Ruvian a whisper that we saw in the cross in the cross foot. We're also we're sort of at war with them. I mean, minor detail, but but um, besides the whole war thing, that's a person who's dealt with demons, and they may have insights into. Demons. If we're at war, if we're at war with everyone, are we really at war with anyone? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm like Sun Tzu over here. Fucking... Yes, definitely everyone. <laughs> uh, I mean, she she is a character we've seen that we imagine has some knowledge of demons, even though she's only been on screen. You know. Uh, well, Oscar doesn't need a lot of uh, impetus to go and talk to a cool kid who also binds demons uh, that yeah. he finds infinitely fascinating. Right. Um, uh, I just don't have a good excuse or premise as to how that can actually happen. Because uh, she showed up and then she got carried away to like the European embassy where they're all like sequestered or some shit. Yeah. Um, well, we do need to find out more about the European embassy anyway because we're like, we need to figure out how to end this war, whether it means killing them all or whether it means uh, just killing the uh, Ankuset and giving like all their stuff to the Ankayet um, or like we've got to move down that direction anyway. So I think we could explore this, but I don't know that we're going to do it right now. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think, I think I'm good for now. Um, I'll save one action. I'm sure I'll come up with some occult thing to study or something else to work on, but 
Um, yeah, you can save it for, in, for the score if you want to, like to serve the score or something. Sure. Yeah, because I, I just kind of want to move forward at this point because I'm at a dead end and I don't have an easy avenue out. Uh, so I'm sure you'll think of something. Uh, actually, John, I'm thinking that Oscar's not going to be around for a little bit. I might play someone else for a session or two. Because um, I have this odd feeling that he might actually travel to Tychorus and come back later. <laughs> Damn. You're laughing, but this is actually incredibly important to him. Like, he is willing yeah, to turn down a lot of things for this. This is his best friend, right? So... I don't know. Maybe. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's let's keep rolling. Uh, uh cool. Cool. I think that rest done. We should probably break. Yeah. Cast you for a break. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Well, let's and we're done. We're done with downtime now, right? Yep. We're done with downtime. We'll come yep. back. We'll the three of you will be back at Scorlock Manor, uh, looking at a map of the city and talking about what to do. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sounds and we can get to get to blowing shit up. Yeah. I'm gonna take uh, two coin in my stash for uh, a little something on the side. Yeah, that's nice. right. Uh, are we and gonna roll real quick for our roll for our vice done? That thing, that right? right. Yes, oh yeah, let's before we end yeah. Yeah. So uh, our our heat should go down to zero. Yep. Uh, technically, our heat would go down even more if we're gonna gain heat. That's an escrow. I don't know uh, if that would. Well, probably it doesn't. It's probably not gonna apply because we'll get that heat later. But right. our heat to yeah. zero right now. So and we have we get tier plus one for our den because we have the bill hooks and the lamp blacks. Correct. Um, uh, selling stuff for us. Yeah, and you're at zero heat now when you're earning. This is one of the first times I think that's. Yeah. Happened. So um, I'm gonna roll because I can because I have a mouse now. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see how much coin this. Makes us yes. Nice. Six there you coin. Go. Thank you. Thank you, Lamp Black. Coin from the syndicate. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and and oh, so yeah. we'll talk about what you owe the crows later on. Uh, yeah, because you yeah. promised to pay on behalf of everyone else. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> right. Fine. I oh. guess. I guess. What we owe we'll them is that. explosives. Uh, <laughs> so we have. We have one more coin that we can fit in the vault. Uh, who? How about we each? I'll I'll take two out, and each of us take one. So I'm gonna well, sh short the vault, short the the crew by three, and we'll each take one. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I could use one. Schwigged. All right, all right, cool stuff. All right, let's uh, we'll take a short break, and we will be back in a few minutes uh, with uh, with more of the blood letters. Uh, don't go anywhere, or we'll probably shoot or stab shoot or enslave you so stick around for your own good <laughs>